This presentation is about the Sun and the inner planets. Our star in the center of our solar system is the Sun. The Sun makes up 99.8% of all the mass in our solar system. The Sun is an average size yellow star that's about 4.5 billion years old. Let's talk about that mass for a second. If you imagine that our solar system every single thing in it, every from the tiniest grain of sand to the star, if you take and pretend that every bit of that is a dollar, the sun would be 99 pennies of that one dollar, and of the last penny you would chop it up into uh, eight piece, ten pieces, and eight of those pieces belong to the sun. So the sun is just ginormous, incredibly, incredibly huge. And if you look at this picture of the sun, you can see there's a giant solar flare. Um, this is really what the sun looks like through a telescope. There are two ideas about the solar system. The geocentric solar system. Until the 1500s, people believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system. They believed that the sun the stars and the planets orbited the Earth. Aristotle was a fam famous Greek scientist who believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system. Ptolemy was another Greek scientist who believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system. Ptolemy wrote about the, his idea and drew pictures of what he called the geocentric solar system. If you look at this picture, you'll see that there is the Earth, and then you have all the planets, the sun, and everything that's orbiting the Earth. Now, back in those days, we didn't have telescopes. People couldn't see the stars. In fact, they, didn't, they thought the planets were just weird acting stars. Um, and as you can see, there's only five planets because Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, uh, these are the only planets that could be seen with the naked eye. And let's face it, the only way they could study astronomy was using their eyes. Now the heliocentric solar system, this is a picture of it up here. In the 1500s, a Polish scientist, Nicholas Copernicus, came up with the heliocentric solar system. He wrote a book that presented the idea that the sun was the center of the solar system. He was afraid to publish his book until he was dying, until he was dying because he was afraid the church would arrest him. Johann Kepler was a German scientist who wrote a book supporting the heliocentric solar system. He used math to show that the planets orbited the sun on elliptical orbits. So Nicholas Copernicus was the first one to come up with this whole idea of a, geo, of a heliocentric solar system. Um, as you can see, it has the sun in the middle and is surrounded by the, the five planets. In 1609, Galileo Galilei built the first telescope that was used to study astronomy. He proved that the heliocentric solar system was correct. He was later arrested by the church and placed under house arrest for the rest of his life. The church believed in the geocentric solar system and didn't want people to believe anything else. Um, Galileo gave us modern, is kind of the father of modern day science because he would never take any scientific fact at face value he would only believe it if he could try to prove it. And kind of unfortunately for him, he took great pride in proving Aristotle wrong. And as we have discussed in class, the church believed in what Aristotle said. So if you said Aristotle was wrong, then you're saying the church is wrong. And that's just not a good plan. This is kind of an artist's picture of what Galileo and his, his telescope would have looked like. Another thing about Galileo, imagine polishing glass by hand until you made your own telescope lenses. Boy, just incredible. So, the terrestrial planets. The solar system is composed of eight major planets, several dwarf planets, the asteroid belt, meteoroids, various moons and comets, and of course the sun. The major planets are divided into two groups, the inner planets and the outer planets. The smaller inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are known as the terrestrial planets. They are made of rocks and metals, and we could stand on their surfaces. And here you can look at this picture, 
and you can see that the four the four terrestrial planets uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars and then that little faint object to the right would be the edge of the asteroid belt. Let's start with Mercury. Mercury goes through phases just like the moon because it's closer to the sun than the Earth is. Mercury is the smallest plant in the solar system and is the closest to the sun. It takes 88 days to orbit the sun and its day lasts for 58 Earth days. Mercury gets up to 800 degrees during the daytime, but is cold as 300 degrees below zero at night. It has no atmosphere and has a very rocky surface that's filled with craters caused by meteors crashing into it. Mercury has no moons. Venus, Earth's twin, question mark. Venus is the second planet from the Sun and is the hottest planet in the solar system, over 900 degrees. It's the hottest because of the thick blanket of clouds that trap the Sun's heat. This thick blanket of clouds also makes it difficult for scientists to study the surface. A day on Venus is longer than its year. A day on Venus lasts 243 Earth days and its year is only 224 Earth days. Venus has no moons and it rotates backwards. The thing with Venus also, beyond the, the heat, is the, the atmosphere is made up of thick clouds of carbon dioxide gas and uh, water vapor and sulfuric acid. It's just a really a nasty concoction of, of gases. And the pressure is so incredibly heavy. You know, we've talked about air pressure. Well, the air pressure of these gases on Venus is so incredibly heavy that it would actually crush you to death. Just You couldn't even stand on the surface with or without a spacesuit because the weight of the atmosphere would literally crush you. The Earth. Earth, our home. As we already know, it is the only planet in our solar system with liquid water. Our atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. It is 93 million miles from the sun. It's the largest of the terrestrial planets. Earth is also the densest of all the planets. Earth has one moon. We also already know that one rotation takes 24 hours and one revolution takes 365 days. This 93 million miles away from the sun, uh, we have a definition for that. We call it an astronomical unit or an AU. And it's nice to know about AUs because AUs can, we can use AUs to judge the distance from the sun from the other planets. Um, Mercury is 0.3 of an AU. Venus is about 0.82 of an AU. Earth is 1 AU. And Mars is about 1.5 AU. So this gives you an idea of the distances in comparison from the Earth to the sun and these other planets. Mars, the red planet. Mars is the most Earth-like planet in our solar system. It's the only planet that man could create colonies upon. Its surface is dry, rocky, and covered with rusty, dry dust. It has a very thin atmosphere, polar ice caps of dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide, and two tiny moons. A day on Mars is just a little bit longer than our day, about 24.6 hours, but its year takes 687 of our days. If you weigh 100 pounds on Earth, on Mars you only weigh about 38 pounds. That's because it's smaller. Mars is about 1.5 times farther from the Sun than the Earth is. And that goes back to that 1.5 AUs. Mars is also one of the planets we, we can see all the terrestrial planets from Earth with our naked eye. Then we have the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt is the boundary between the inner planets and the outer planets. The asteroid belt is made up of thousands of rocky or metallic objects of various sizes that orbit the Sun. The asteroid belt is between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. It forms the boundary between the inner planets and the outer planets. Over 40,000 asteroids are at least one half mile in diameter. 
The largest asteroid is also the first to, ever, to have been found. It is named Cirrus and is one of the dwarf planets. 